Well, it is wonderful to see you. It's wonderful to be here. I'm happy to be awakened this morning. It's somehow right that you and I are both have the background of, of too many books. Yeah, yes. I would like to open this, uh, this conference with this, what I call it, the Transpersonal Legacy Panel. Some of you that say something to the people with these three questions. Start. The first question is the meaning of waking up for you. Well, for me, awakening is becoming aware of my true nature, which to me means my connection to the natural world, my connection to other people, and my connection in some way to all things. So awakening is not about Jim Fadiman. It is about the transpersonal, the past, the personality, and being aware of that, and being joyed, having the joy of that, that realization. Okay, so you mean something like uh, to be awake to the consciousness, the transpersonal consciousness, that the flow of consciousness is passing exactly. through all of exactly. us. Exactly, yes. it's, and, it's, and it turns out, and it's much more than consciousness, it is what, what flows through consciousness. Yes. So it's kind of one step less definite and more universal. And uh, in your life, which are the most important experience that you can remember or cite as uh, awakening? Of well, awakening? For fortunately, I can actually answer that question, which is I can even date it as October 19th, 1961, when I had, with guidance and support, deep, psychedelic experience and in that experience i had the realization that my own nature my own being is without form and without time and without location and in itself cannot be cannot be put into awareness but as you return the way psychedelics work as the body returns to its normal uh, capacity and that your your consciousness goes back into your kind of enclosed identity, that's a second level of awakening, which is you have not only awakened to the interconnection of all things, but you have recalled the awakening in your in in this body in this time and and i remember one of my confusions was now that i can see what a large being i and all of us are how why did i remember that as jim fadiman a first year graduate student in psychology it was and it was a very that was my hard question for the maybe the next 50 years so i think what i'm saying is that awakening had a impact and it also had a recollection those make up the the memory and, and my life did change. My beliefs changed. My attitudes changed. My certainly my career changed. And uh, I have not lost the shadow of or the the flickering light of that event, even as I speak to you now. And uh, how do you see the relationship between awakening and uh, growing up and evolution? Well. I mean, throughout history, what we know is that the people who share that experience that I had from religious traditions, spiritual traditions, from athletics, from childbirth, from all of those what we call peak experiences, uh, they're all the same. They're the same and, and unique. It's a little bit like if you if you think of that all streams go to the ocean. There's just one ocean. But each of the streams is both different and part of that ocean and that that is the connecting um, thread that transpersonal came out for a few of us that was our contribution of what it looked like and why conventional psychology simply had no no place for it regular psychology was not a for or against it just had no place so that just as an apple tree has no room for an orange it's not a judgment and uh, we know how transformative are uh psychedelic or antiogenic experience. I also had my first one in the 72, I was 18 year old, I know. But what I always was aware of was, okay, and now in the ordinary life, which kind of tools to remember? Well, yes, and psychedelics is what I did, and that was in 1961, and the world has changed. And if I were, and I am asked, what can I do other than that? And the answer, first of all, is to be 
in quiet contact with nature. I saw a quote just yesterday that said, I don't like crowds of people, but I love to be in crowds of trees. And what we know is when you are in nature and you simply understand that you're 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 part of it, you're not separate in any way, that is awakening. And what the Japanese call forest bathing, which is allowing yourself to to recall that you're part of this. You're you're not, it's impossible to be separate. And when people say, well, I'm my own person and nature is its own thing. I say, just hold your breath and let me know when you don't need air from the rest of the world. And of course, the wonderful thing is that we're able to love. One of the differences between us and, and maybe uh, the rock, which is when you love, you are actually getting your joy from giving pleasure or joy to others it's more more it's more than you and in that more than you you are awake and of course it's service when you are serving and i mean service in every way when you're when you're in a garden and you are doing a good job for your radishes that's service that's service to the radishes and when we serve other people again we go outside the the personal and we are in the transpersonal and if i want to look at if I want to find a number of saints and I need them rather quickly, I would simply go to a gardening club and look for the people who love their gardens in that way where they understand that their garden loves them. And of course, that's what's behind most spiritual practices. Most spiritual practices are to allow you to get to stop being so interested in your personal identity. And to, after all, if you're simply following your breath, simplest of all practices, the one thing that isn't of interest to your mind is everything else that bothers you and concerns you and excites you and attaches to you. It's simply, oh, that's the next breath. I think I need to watch that one. So those are the, you know, we're, we're surrounded with opportunities. And the wonderful thing is if you start with your breath, you're always having the opportunity to be more awake. Can we end with, uh, with a sort of message for the young people? Yes. Yes, we are, we are not leaving you a very good world, but we are so grateful that you are awake enough to save this world for yourself and for the generations that come thereafter. And remember, when you are lost, go into nature and you will find yourself again. Perfect. Here we are. Oh, good. I mean, I was looking out into that large room with those people from all over Europe because you know you have, to, you have to understand that 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 Euritas is is my favorite real organization. American Transpersonal got lost. It got lost with psychosynthesis being suddenly with craziness. It got lost with the Transpersonal Graduate School trying to be part of conventional psychology and and belittling itself, making itself small to do that. But the diversity of Euritas and the friendship and the you know the the acceptance of each other's real differences of of approach is wonderful, and yes, I miss being with you. <laughs> yeah, so this and I love it. You know, I looked at those questions and I thought, woo, those are hard questions. <laughs> I, when I look out this window into my front yard, uh, I see trees, and I <laughs> I've actually become more and more fond of trees, partic particularly during. Uh, COVID, because I spent my my separate time was with trees. I've actually beginning to learn to not only to talk to trees, which is easy, but to listen. And I'll I'll give you a I'll give you a tree wisdom, okay? Because I never would have thought of this. It because I would take evening walks and then I would talk to a particular tree. And one evening the tree said, "If you can't see the tops of the trees, you're walking too fast." Right? And I realized, <laughs> I thought, "Whoa." <laughs> Because what's wonderful is I know I never said that. I never would think of that. Thank you. And I will I will be with you in October in every way I take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.